given the relation R with the following functional dependencies, we would like to find the decomposition of the relation to BCNF. The first step of the BCNF decomposition is to check and see if all the functional dependencies are in BCNF form. If all the functional dependencies are in BCNF form, that means that we do not need to decompose our relation because the relation is already in BCNF. So we're looking to check which functional dependencies are in BCNF form. And in order to do so, we need to find the candidate key of the relation R. So to find the candidate key of the relation, we're looking to find the minimum amount of attributes that their closure gives us all the attributes of the relation R. So in this case, we found that the attributes A and B give us the candidate key of the relation. According to BCNF conditions, we need our x of the functional dependency to be the candidate key of the relation. So as we can see here, our first functional dependency, AB goes to CD. AB is the candidate key of R. So AB goes to CD, holds BCNF. We'll move on to our second functional dependency, D goes to E. We can see that D is not the candidate key of our relation. So this functional dependency violates BCNF. Now that we found a functional dependency that violates BCNF, we move on to our next step. In the next step, we create two subrelations according to the following conditions, where the first relation is the closure of X and the second relation is the father relation minus the closure of x plus the attribute x of that functional dependency. So we'll look at our functional dependency d goes to e, where the closure of d is de. So we create two relations where our first relation is d e, the closure of x, and r2, our second relation, is a, b, c, d, which is our relation a, b, c, d, e, minus the closure of d, which is d, e, plus d. That's how we got a, b, c, d. Now, after creating the two subrelations, we go to each subrelation and we check all of its functional dependencies to see if now all its functional dependencies are in BCNF. If all the functional dependencies of the two subrelations are in BCNF, we, we finish the decomposition and we do not have to break down the relations any further. If one of the functional dependencies of one of the relations violates BCNF, we repeat step two for that specific relation, for that specific functional dependency that does not hold BCNF. We continue doing so until we do not need to decompose any further because all the functional dependencies are in BCNF. So now we'll check each subrelation and see if its functional dependencies hold BCNF. We'll find the candidate key in order to do so. So in our first relation, R1, the functional dependencies are D goes to E. We can see that D is a candidate key 
of the relation. So D goes to E is in BC and F, meaning the relation DE holds BC and F, and we do not need to decompose it any further. The second relation, ABCD, has a candidate key of AB. The first functional dependency, AB goes to CD, is in BC and F form, because AB is the candidate key of the relation. Our next functional dependency, A goes to C, is not in BCNF form and violates it. So we'll do the same step, step two, for the following functional dependency. So now we'll create two subrelations, R3 and R4. R3 has a candidate key a. We can see that the functional dependency A goes to C is in BC and F because A is the candidate key of the relation. We'll move on to relation 4. The candidate key is AB. The first functional dependency AB goes to D holds BC and F. We'll go to the, to the next functional dependency B goes to D. We see that B is not the candidate key AB of the relation. So B goes to D is not in BCNF. And so we have to repeat step two for this functional dependency. Now we create two sub relations BD and AB. BD has a candidate key B and so the functional dependency B goes to D is in BCNF. The relation AB has a candidate key AB. And so the functional dependency AB goes to AB is also in BCNF. And so we do not need to decompose the relations any further. Our final decomposition is composed of the subrelations that all their functional dependencies hold BCNF. Now that we've finished the decomposition of the relation R, we get that we have four new subrelations R1, R2, R3, and R4.